Welcome back to another episode of Animal of the Week. Today we're looking at a family of very sad frogs. This family of sad frogs are known as the rain frogs, scientifically called Brevicipitidae. Now there are many different species of rain frog, but they all share the same characteristic look of depression and sadness, and yet somehow that makes them incredibly cute. There are 36 separate species, which makes them a relatively small family, but they make up for this by being so adorable. They are true frogs as they hail from the order Anura. They are most closely related to the family of frogs called Hemisotai Day, commonly known as the shovel-nosed frogs, and the resemblance is clear. However, what the rain frog lacks in nose, the shovel nose compensates for. Despite being a whole family, all these frogs live almost solely in southern and eastern Africa. Their exact habitat obviously varies greatly between the species, as south and eastern Africa include some very diverse ecosystems. For example, the desert rain frog lives in Namibia and South Africa, but only inhabits a very particular area. They thrive in the very narrow strip of beach between the Atlantic Ocean and the Namib Desert. So despite being called the desert rain frog, they only live on the very western edge of one. On the other hand, we have the genus Probrevisa made up of six species more commonly known as forest rain frogs. That's because they inhabit wetter tropical and subtropical forests and mountains in Tanzania, Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Despite this huge variance in habitat, all the species seem to display quite similar behaviour of burrowing, which might seem strange for a frog. In desert or dryland habitats, they have been found to spend most of their time burrowed into the sand and dirt, and in more wet forested habitats, they like to burrow and hide under leaf litter and in the ground. They do not actually need a body of water to survive in. Common frogs eat snails and slugs, but these ones prefer things slightly more exotic, such as South African earthworms, termites, and any other insect from the region they live in. This is why burrowing is so vital to the survival of many of the desert and dryland species, because they have to dig down to the cooler, more moist dirt in search of food, or they have to wait until the wet season to bring their prey to the surface. When it comes to breeding, these frogs are quite unusual when compared to most other frogs. The members of the genus known as forest rain frogs, and that of breviceps, which together make up most of the rain frog species at 25 between them, reproduce through what is called direct development. This isn't an at all unusual breeding method, as it just means that like humans, when born, the frogs are just smaller versions of their adult selves, and will then directly develop from there with no tadpole stage. This is obviously not unusual for a lot of animals, but for a frog to not have a tadpole stage and simply hatch from their eggs as fully formed but miniature versions of themselves is quite remarkable. The reason for this lack of tadpole phase is pretty obvious when we remember that they are not aquatic frogs, with some living in the desert, some in dryland savanna, and some in forests, preferring burrowing over ponds. Most of them display a great level of sexual dimorphism, with the males being much smaller than the females. This is quite normal in a lot of frogs, however in the rain frogs it's taken to such an extreme that the males have trouble mating with the females due to how small they are. They are not large enough to use amplexus when mating. Amplexus is what a lot of frogs do where they grasp the female with their front legs to mate with them, but due to the rotund shape of the rain frogs and the comically small size of the males, they can't grasp around the females and so they secrete a sticky fluid from their underside while the females secrete it from their backs to basically glue themselves together instead. Some rain frogs are thought to maybe possess maternal and paternal instincts, as it has been observed that sometimes when the clutch has been laid in a burrow, the female or sometimes a male will stay close and keep an eye on it. Now you may have seen a viral video of a very round and squeaky frog screaming while covered in sand. This is actually a desert rain frog and it's displaying a behaviour common in most other rain frogs as well. They can blow themselves up like a beach ball when threatened by just taking in a lot of air and they will let out high pitched screams to try and scare off any attackers. This is why in Afrikaans they are sometimes referred to as blasopi, which means blow up. It can be rather effective as well even if it does look rather funny to us. They also utilise this screaming ability for mating, as it is hard to find them when they have burrowed underground. The males will let out these high pitched screams to alert females to their location. They also do it when the wet season is about to begin. Reasons for this are unknown, but maybe they are just calling for the rain. Predators will obviously vary based on the regions they live in, but in the desert anything like snakes might take advantage of them. Birds are also a common enemy for these frogs, with things like the Cape Eagle Owl, the Black Eagle, and even little warblers having a go at the small males and the tiny baby froglets when they have hatched. The conservation status of these frogs varies wildly from species to species, with the common rain frog which lives in the southwestern Cape being least concerned, or the Bilbo's rain frog from eastern South Africa, and yes it is named after Bilbo Baggins from The Hobbit and Lord of the 
the Rings because the scientist that discovered it was a huge fan, being near threatened. But conversely, we have all six species of the forest rain frog being classed as endangered, and the Taita warty frog from Kenya being critically endangered. The common pattern here though is that the most threatened species are usually those that live in the forested habitats, and the desert and dryland dwellers are doing much better. This is because the cause of most of the population dying off is habitat loss, and forests are far more vulnerable to logging and farming than desert and drylands. But even in the drylands, some species like the aforementioned Bilbo's rain frog is near threatened due to the expansion of urban centres and the building of infrastructure like roads over their habitats, splitting up their populations. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.